Hello, I'm Jerry Varnado, pastor at Ray's United Methodist Church in Oconee County, Georgia. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. Now, uh, today uh, we're going to be finishing up our study of the book of Colossians, uh, and we'll be covering chapter 4, verse 7 through 18. I'm actually just going to read uh, 7 through 9 as, as Paul begins to close out and give final greetings in this letter. Beginning at verse 7, he says, Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. Would you pray with me? And now, Lord, give us all grace that I might speak with clarity of thought and, uh, and that you might give us all ears to hear uh, what you would say to your church this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Paul now turns to a few personal greetings uh, which we shouldn't pass over quickly. I mean, oftentimes I get to the closing of the letter and I don't even cover, cover the end of it. Uh, but I think that uh, we might not think him mentioning these persons is unimportant and, or that the passage is unimportant because it, do, it doesn't have much theological content or really not any. But Paul is mentioning names of people who will be of great importance in the years to come even though we may never hear of them i think paul has a sense that he is not going to be around much longer and that these fledging young churches will be continuously challenged by heresies in the years to come even as they were in these first years these churches are hearing the names of those they can trust to help them along the way men who have the stamp of apostolic authority and approval. And we must keep in mind that these young churches do not have Bibles as, as we do. There, of course, there is an Old Testament, the Bible of the Jews, but that would not likely be available to most of the Gentile churches that Paul has established. All they had was the apostles' letters that circulated through the churches and the leaders who were trained by the apostles. They had questions from time to time, and they needed to know who to turn to when Paul was gone. Just as now, there were many, many voices out there uh, wanting to answer their questions and, uh, and wanted to tell them what to believe and how they should live. But Paul wanted them to know who they could trust. The men mentioned here were undoubtedly part of the group of leaders that continued the spread of the gospel after the death of the apostles. And we owe them a great deal because it was through them and those they discipled uh, that carried the gospel to our forebears that we could hear the message. I think that it's good that we should at least take the time to call their names as a way of giving thanks for their service. First mention is Tychicus who was chosen to carry this letter to the Colossians and most likely at the same time, the letter to Philemon, uh, which we will study next week. This is an important job that involves significant risk. The journey involved more than 1,200 miles by sea and another 200 or more by land. An additional note to the capability and trustworthiness of Tychicus is that he was also uh, chosen by Paul to deliver his letter to the Ephesians. So he had a hand in preserving for us three epistles of the New Testament. He not only carried the mail, he also uh, was charged along with Onesimus to give the Colossians an accurate account of Paul's circumstances and also to encourage them in their faith. He is called by Paul a faithful minister, a dear brother, and a fellow servant of the Lord. Next mentioned as an accompanying uh, Tychicus 
is Onesimus, who is referred to as a dear brother and one of you, meaning that he was a native Colossian. Now, that's all I'm going to say about Onesimus today, as he's going to be the main subject in our study of Philemon uh, next Wednesday. Philemon is a short book, just a few verses, and so I'll be able to cover it in one lesson. And Onesimus is the center of that text, uh, center of that letter, so uh, I'll cover him next week. Next is Aristarchus, and he's a Macedonian from Thessalonica that we know from Acts 27.2. Now he is first mentioned as being seized along with Gaius when a riot broke out in Ephesus because of Paul's uh, preaching, uh, because many people were becoming Christians and forsaking their idol goddess Artemis. And uh, he, he's he seemed to be a continuing companion of Paul, as he's mentioned three times in Acts, once in Colossians, and once in Philemon. Next is Mark, of course, which we know uh, as the author of the gospel bearing his name. He accompanied Paul and Barnabas, his cousin, on their first missionary journey, but tired of the trip and returned home. And because of that, Paul... Uh, refused to take him on his second missionary journey, which caused a serious conflict between Paul and Barnabas, you, you might remember. I mean, it was so serious, they split up, and Paul went his way and Barnabas his way, each taking some disciples with them to minister to the churches they had started on their first journey. Uh, now, apparently, uh, Paul and, and Barnabas did practice... <laughs> the gospel of reconciliation they preached, which we would expect of them, as Mark is later commended by Paul uh, and was with him in his Roman incarceration. In 1 Peter 5, 13, the apostle referred to Mark as his son, so he had a close association with Peter as well. So he kept real good company, and he's in a good position to be a part of the second generation of leaders of the young Christian church. Now, all we know about Jesus called justice is in this one verse. He was a Jewish convert who was with Paul in Rome at the time he wrote the letter to the Colossians. And that's really all we can say about him. Uh, but he must have been important to Paul uh, for him to have been in Rome with Paul during his incarceration. Paul next mentions Epaphras who he also says is one of you. Now, most concluded this meant he was also from Colossae and presumed that he was a convert under Paul during his time in Asia Minor. Paul identifies him as a co-worker and gives him a strong recommendation. Paul mentions that Luke is with him. We, of course, recognize him immediately as the author of both Luke and Acts. And we owe him a big debt of gratitude for those two works. His skill as a historian added much to our understanding of the gospel, especially with regard to the power and ministry of the Holy Spirit God has made available to all believers. Now lastly, Demas is mentioned without comment. Now Demas is only mentioned here in Philemon. Then later in 2 Timothy 4.10, Paul writes that Demas loved the world, and had therefore deserted him. Now, so other than Demas, <laughs> we have every reason to believe that those mentioned here were important players uh, in guiding the church into the next generation and thus helping preserve the gospel message for generations to come. It is good that we remember their names and thank God for their service. They are true veterans in the cosmic war between good and evil. And they gave themselves to God as living sacrifices so that God's kingdom might come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, uh, that concludes our study of the book of Colossians. And I uh, just want to thank you for tuning in with us and joining us, uh, particularly tonight, and hope you'll join us each Wednesday as we continue studying God's word. Now, uh, so next Wednesday, uh, we'll study the book of Philemon, 
uh, and we'll we'll cover uh, all 25 verses of that uh, book in in uh, in one session. So again, thank you for being with us, and hope you'll continue to join us. And don't forget, we are uh, meeting uh, at at on Sundays at our church property at 1521 Race Church Road, uh, Sundays at 11. So God bless you, and remember, God loves you, and so does His preacher.